Hello guys, welcome to the next episode in this Mercedes Sprinter van conversion series. In today's video we're going to be looking at the solar panel installation. I've got a confession to make, I did say in my previous solar panel video that I'm going to engineer some way to tilt the panels, you know, so that they're facing the sun. I've looked at this in some great length and I will come up with a, a workable solution for this, but at the moment I can't find anything that's sturdy enough that I'm happy with to support the frames when they're in the upright position. You know, if I get a bit of wind on there, I need something quite strong so they're not going to blow about. I mean, I purchased some aluminium straps that I thought I could use, you know, to hold them in the upright position and then realised that these are going to be nowhere near strong enough, you know. So I've got to go back to the drawing board on that one. Far short of building a complete rigid frame and then bolting them to that and then elevating that, you know, that might add a lot of weight to the roof as well. So, and I don't want it to look massive on the roof there and it's going to be a complete eyesore when you're driving around. I want to keep it as low key as I possibly can. So for the moment, because obviously we want to get off on our trip and we want to enjoy the van, what I've done is I've taken some of this slotted Unistrut, which they use in industry for making brackets as support pieces of equipment. And I've used this as my roof rails. You can purchase a set of roof rails from Mercedes. I think they're about five or six hundred pounds just for two rails. It's a lot of money just for two bits of aluminium channel. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to bolt this down to the roof using those fixing points where you would normally bolt the roof rails to anyway. I'm going to make sure I put plenty of Sikaflex in there so it's all nice and waterproof. And then we're going to use these two rails to secure our solar panels to. And I'm just going to use some little angle brackets, some bolts with channel nuts and literally just bolt all three down onto the roof. And that will do for the moment. For these first couple of months where we're touring around France and Spain, I'm going to use them like that, see how I'll get on. And then during that period, I'm going to get my pen and paper out and see if I can't design something that's going to be a bit more suitable. I've been looking at those bed lifting systems, you know, where you've got like an ottoman type thing underneath your bed and the brackets have gas struts and they lift the whole bed up. I mean, they can lift a fair bit of weight, sort of maybe 90, 100 kilos. I mean, my panels actually only weigh about 10 kilos each. So we're talking about 30 kilos total. So I haven't got to lift anything like that, but something like that with a couple of gas struts, that may be the answer. So I'm definitely going to work a little bit more on this because I do want to make the most of these solar panels and I do want to engineer some way I can elevate them towards the sun because I know I'm going to get probably 30 to 40% more use out of them. But for now, I'm just going to bolt them to the roof and then run the cables down to the solar charge controller. How are we going to fix these solar panels to the roof? I've got this aluminium angle which I'm going to fix to the channel on the roof and then with this little M8 knob that will go through the channel and then it will go into the solar panel and then what I'm going to use is these aluminium rib nuts. I've drilled a small hole now I'm going to widen that out to suit these aluminium nuts and then we're going to put one of these in and then that M8 wheel knob will bolt into there. It's always a nerve-wracking bit when you're drilling a hole into a 150 pound solar panel. So I've got the rift nut wound onto the end of the rift nut tool. I've got this little wheel knob just nipped up nice and tight. I push this into the hole and then we'll pull that up. It'll act exactly the same as a rivet. Squeeze these two handles together. That's in there nice and tight now. And that's given us an M8 thread in our solar panel. 
So now that knob, see that will just wind in there nicely. So we've enlarged the hole on the solar panel to 11 millimeters. That's exactly the same size as this riv nut. Place the riv nut on the tool, open the handles right out, wind that on till it's on there nice and snug, like so. Place the riv nut inside the hole and insert it right up until it bottoms out and then close up the handles. Make sure that it's nipped up nice and tight. That's it. And then just back out the thread. And then we go. Today we've got our solar panel with the rivet nuts in. And then we've got our aluminium angle with corresponding hole. That'll go onto the side of our solar panel. And then the wheel nut. wheel nut will just do up nice and tight that will hold that solar panel nice and secure just want to talk you through how we're going to bolt these solar panels to the roof I've got this unistrut slotted rail galvanized steel rail which we've fixed into the gutters on the roof with this slotted rail you get these channel nuts they've got little teeth along here that when it's tightened up they'll bite into this edge and that'll lock them in place. And you can slide them along to wherever you need them, then wind your bolt in from above, tighten it up, and then that'll lock it, sandwich it on these rails. So we'll drill some holes in our aluminium angles. We'll put the channel nut underneath, aluminium angle on top, a nice hefty square plate washer, and then we can bolt through the whole lot into the channel nut. And then once that's done up, that'll be really nice and secure. And then just to finish it off, I'll put a plastic end cap in just to give it that nice neat finish look. some of these self-drilling roofing bolts. I'm going to put them together with a large penny washer and then we're going to drill through the roof of the van and fix this channel down. I've run some beads of Sikaflex underneath there and I'm actually going to drill through those Sikaflex beads and that will help to keep the screws waterproof. So that should hold it nice and tight. I'll get a few of those in, that'll be plenty strong enough. I'm going to want the cables from the solar panels to come into the roof of the van in this rear quarter. So I've got this cable entry here. What we're going to do is just going to sikaflex this to the roof of the van. I'm going to drill a very small hole just for the cables to go through and we'll put a rubber grommet in that. And then we'll just clean off the van roof, clean all this dirt off. We'll give it a wipe over with some primer and then we'll Sikaflex that to the roof. And then by the time the Sikaflex is cured, that'll be sufficient to hold that in place. I'm not gonna put any additional screws in this. Right, so we've cut the hole with the Starrett cutter. It's left a little bit of a raw edge. So with this little round file, I'm just gonna file these edges and then we'll come back and paint it with some Hammerite. Right, before I paint this raw metal edge with the Hammerite, I'm just gonna wipe down this whole area with this sicker primer. 
and then that, this will make sure that it's absolutely spotlessly clean when we come to use the Sikaflex silicon that's going to really have a good bond to the roof of the van. I put a decent bead of Sikaflex around the bottom of the connector before I stuck it on the roof. I've just pushed it down just so there's an even squeeze out all the way around. I'm going to completely leave that now until it's gone off before I start putting any wires through it. Just got the solar panels just laid out in the workshop here. Each of these panels comes with about five meters of cable, but we don't need all of that. So I've got some spare connectors because these ones have been crimped on. So I'll be struggling to salvage these, to be honest. So I might as well just cut them off and use these other ones. And then what we want to do, we're going to wire these in series. So I'm going to connect the positive from this panel to the negative on this panel, and then the positive on this panel to the negative on this panel. And I'm just going to take a single positive and negative down to the van. So all we need to do really is just shorten these cables so we can connect these panels together and then just have the new clips in between each set of panels. The cables on the solar panel are conveniently labelled up with a little plus and minus. So now we've shortened the positive one and put a male lead on it. The males tend to be positive and the females tend to be negative. No pun intended. And then I've just shortened the male, the positive, and shortened the negative. So these two will get joined together. And then we'll do the same. We'll now shorten this positive and shorten the negative on the next panel. And I'll show you how to put these connectors on. The first thing you have to do is remove this gland and the little waterproof bit. Thread that onto the cable first. Don't forget to do this. I have done it in the past. Get them on there first. Put this bit down and then we'll put the crimp on here. And then this part, the larger one of these goes in the male fitting and the one that's a smaller pin goes in the female fitting. So you just insert your cable and then what we do with the crimp tool, we'll just crimp these two little tongs down here, crimp that onto the cable and then we can insert it in that. Right, we've crimped that onto the end of the cable. I've also put a little bit of solder on there just to make sure. I, want, I don't want that to come off and I want it to be a good electrical connection. There's some little barbs around here. You now just insert it into the fitting until you hear it click. Like that, that is in there now. That's on there quite solid. And then you just need to put this little weatherproof gland back in the end of the fitting. Line up these little wavy lines here and then just tighten the gland nut. And what that'll do is that'll pull that waterproof seal in nice and tight and squash it around the cable so that no water can get in there. There is a tool for doing this, but you can do it by hand if you've got a vice-like grip. There you go, and they're snug, nice and tight now. So that's on there really nice and tight, totally waterproof. So that's all the cables prepped for the solar panels. These two clips will get joined together. And then again, these two clips will get joined together. And then at the end there, we've got one positive. And then I've got a long lead here, which is the corresponding negative. And we'll start fixing them from that end. We'll work our way through and then that be the last two that connect onto the box that go downstairs into the van. So we've shortened those cables up nicely. There's a big bundle of spare that we've got left over. It's probably about 20 metres of cable I've cut off there, so that will save us quite a bit of voltage drop. Right, we're going to start at the cab end. We're going to fix that panel up first and then work our way back to the back of the van. Right, so on the front here, I've got a piece of angle. So that'll give a bit of protection to that front edge. Obviously that's leading into the wind. So that's gonna give a bit of strength to that front edge and just uh, give us like a wind break. And then behind that, I've just got these angle brackets and they're all bolted to the unistrut. So that's the first panel bolted up. You can see now those angle brackets bolted into the rivnuts 
in the solar panel. That long bracket at the front is giving that front edge plenty of support. And then we've got the same brackets here. And then I'm just going to continue with the next solar panel coming back. This is one of the more interesting places to set up a soldering station on the end of my roof here. Just got these last couple of connections to make on the cables that go down into the van. I'm just putting these last couple of crimps on. I'm not going to connect these together because obviously in the daylight these panels will be producing power. So I'm going to leave these unplugged and then I'll put some bags on them just to weatherproof them just for a day. And then once I've connected the cables, the other end of this cable into the solar charge controller, then I'll plug these in. So there we go guys, that's the solar system installed. I think 480 watts is going to be loads of solar power. I think that's going to give us plenty for what we need it for. Obviously I probably use a little bit more than most with the YouTube channel. I am going to be doing a lot of video editing um, and also a lot of time on the internet answering people's questions and uploading videos etc. So we will be using it quite heavily which is why we put such a big system in. If you're just holidaying and you just need it for maybe occasional light laptop use, charging mobile phones and so forth, you probably don't need anywhere near the setup that I've got here. I must say I'm really pleased how well those solar panels fit on the roof. So those 36 cells are absolutely ideal to fit the width of the van. They only overhang probably by about two inches either side and from the ground you can hardly see them at all. So I'm really pleased how well that fits in there. And the distance between the two roof fans front and back was just perfect to get those three panels in. So it couldn't have worked out better. I'm definitely going to come up with a solution to elevate those panels. And when we get back in the UK just before summer, just before my grandson's due to be born, maybe I'll have some time then to engineer a solution for that. I hope you found some useful tips in that video for doing your own solar installation. Please do share the videos on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. Please do give the video a thumbs up because that really helps boost the channel. And thanks very much for watching guys. Cheers.